Show me what and how you love, and I shall tell you what you are. Love is like electricity. It presupposes a positive and a negative pole. It requires two, one to love and the other to be loved. To draw out the best love, one must want to be loved and want to love in return. When one comes to you wanting to be helped, the first step you should take to help him is to love him. If he comes seeking your friendship even more than your help, you will be able to help him still more. Do not try to convert anybody. Do not try to save any soul. Do not try to do things for anyone. Merely give your love to him. That is the biggest thing that you or anyone possibly can give. But you will find that you cannot make your love reach him unless he wants it, unless he is eager for it, is hungry and thirsty for it. If he comes for help and doesn't want your love, you can't help him. If he has to be saved or converted, you cannot help him if he despises you or doesn't care for your love. But if he wants, if he wants your love, this is the way to love him. Love him for himself, not for what you can get out of him. Do not mix your love for him with any alloy whatever, either desire for him to admire you, praise you, increase your wealth, or benefit you in any way whatever. If he can be made happier, your wealth will be sufficiently increased. If he can find greater reason to praise God or the power of God's love, you should feel sufficiently praised. Love him with an unmixed love. Unmixed love is a pure love. Power is in such love. Sir Galahad loved with such love it was said that he had the strength of ten because his heart was pure. In your thought, take each one who gives himself and give him to the Father. Give him to the eternal plan which God has in store for him. Give him to his destiny, not to your little fancied image of his destiny. Everyone who comes to you and lets you love him in such a way, do not keep for yourself, unbind him and let him go. Give him to a larger master mastership than your own personal wishes and needs. You have the power so to give him because he gives himself to you. Loving is a giving. We cannot love another without giving ourselves to that one. Our lives are made up of giving ourselves to others. One who loves you but is afraid to be possessed by you does not truly love you. For perfect love is founded on perfect trust. We sometimes repent of our gift and withdraw ourselves from the receiver and give ourselves to someone else. That is because we find that those we give ourselves to keep us for their own private, personal aggrandizement. It is such keeping of our friends that leads to all the jealousy, tyranny, suffering, and tragedies in our human relationships. But no one cares to withdraw himself from one who never abuses this trust, who never uses one for personal selfish ends. And so as quickly as one gives himself to you or gives his life to you or seeks your love, for it is all the same thing, Give him at once to God, to the larger self, the self without limits, without bounds, the infinite one who is all in all. One who loves in this way, I am describing, who does not want to possess his loved ones for selfish purposes, finds that he does, however, possess them for larger purposes. For he who giveth shall receive, and who, who, who loses his life shall find it. One who loses his friends in this greater love will always keep his friends. The one who finds that he is possessed by a love which is limitless and boundless does not ever want to cease to be possessed by that love. Such a love he finds sets him free. Such a love removes all limitations to his growth and enables him to grow to meet any need. For such love is not our own little loving, but the Holy Spirit loving through us. And now listen to a great and eternal truth, a truth which will abide as long as the earth shall last and which will stand throughout eternity as one of the doors through which we may enter the kingdom of heaven. Everyone wants down deep in his soul to be possessed by a great, towering, unselfish, unself-seeking, colossal love. That is the chief end and aim of his journey, whole journey through life. To find such a love is to find the very kingdom itself, for it ushers one into the kingdom of heaven right on earth, here and now. To rest in and abide in such a love is to rest in and abide in the Father, for God is love. For just one moment of such a love, one would give all the rest of his life. Can it be that this is why Orpheus looked back at Eurydice? Is not this the theme of Browning's last ride together? To have just one moment of such a love, would, man would give up his very hope of eternity. Why? Because such love is eternal life. As Jesus said in his last great intercessory prayer, 
And this is life eternal, that they should know thee, the only true God, and him whom thou didst send, even Jesus Christ. To know these two is to know the very quintessence of perfect love, for God is love, and Christ is that love made manifest on earth. To know such a love is to know what eternity is. To be, to be possessed by such a love, or to possess another with such a love, is to be in the kingdom. And when one, and when one is in the kingdom, he is separated from all trouble, all discard, all evil. That is why Christ did not pray when people came to be healed. He simply loved them. Everyone craves freedom. Everyone craves enlargement. At heart, we want to be free from the things that would keep us small, and we want the opportunity to become colossal. We want free lives and large lives. This love gives both of these because it gives you to the Father, to truth, to love, to life, to your destiny, to your perfect life plan. If you want to save a man, do not try to make him good. Try to make him happy. And by setting him free and by making him large, you'll make him happy. In order to do this, all you need to do is to give forth an unselfish, colossal wish for his perfect happiness, regardless of what comes in return to you. Such a wish gives him to the kingdom. But the one who comes for help must want your love. That is why Christ said, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. He is thinking of the colossal, unselfish love he is ready to give when he cried, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. The power lies in the quality of that kind of love. There is as much difference between the self-seeking love and the self-giving love as there is between a bucket full of water standing stagnant by the sink and one striking against the mill wheel. One is the same old gallon the same old bucket. The other we see hitting the wheel is every instant renewed, is every second of time a new gallon. One has no power, the other has infinite, unmeasured, endless power. Power that will last as long as the stream lasts, as long as the mountain from whence it comes lasts, as long as vapor continues to be drawn up and comes down in the form of rain. Christ looked upon the young man and he loved him. Christ looked upon the multitude and had compassion upon them. Christ wept and those about him said, Behold how he loved him. Love suffereth long and is kind, is not puffed up, seeketh not his own, is not provoked. This kind of love is God in manifestation, for God is love. This love is the power of the Holy Spirit working in man. Jesus came so that this power of loving would come more fully to men, and the works which he did we shall do, even greater works than these shall we do, because he went unto the Father. To help a man, then love him unselfishly, to save a man, love him unself-seekingly, to keep a friend forever, give him away to the Father.